I don't have any guilt hanging over my head. I don't lay awake at night wondering if I'm going to die and go to hell. Listen, I'm going to tell you. If for some reason you've done that in your life, I'm not here to condemn you. What I'm here to tell you is, is you, you can't live that kind of life presently in your life and expect to go to heaven. You can't live like that and expect to give the Lord praise and the Lord move in your life. I'm telling you, the reason that He instructs us, the reason that He disciplines us is because He's trying to move us to a holy lifestyle. It takes holiness to see the Lord. What am I going to tell my kids about what you just said? You need to talk to them. See, there are people in this room this morning who really know this word's calling them out because they aren't even, they aren't even right with God. Truth is, you need to be saved. I don't care whose church you're a member of. I don't care if you've got a certificate of baptism in your baby book. I don't care if you've got perfect attendance 10 years running. What I need to know is, are you born again? Does Jesus live in your heart? Listen, I told somebody the other day at the hospital, listen, I don't care about your church. What I want to know is right now in the condition you're in, if you died right now, and you were immediately ushered before the Lord, and the Lord said, tell me why I should let you in, what would you tell them? My baby book's got a certificate. Lord's going to open up this word. And then he's going to look in that other great big old book, the book of life. And he's going to scroll down and see who? Terry. I see terrorized. I see tearful eyes. I see terrible. But I don't see Terry. You see, without Jesus, I'm terrible. Without Jesus, I cry a lot. Without Jesus, I'm a holy terror. But with Jesus, I'm forgiven. See, you may be here this morning and be an alcoholic. But you know what can happen? I read them a little story. I know what time it is. I read a story Wednesday night. Billy Graham wrote it in a, in a letter to his supporters. And he told a story about a, a woman overseas that gave her life to Jesus. But what normally happens over there when they give their life to Jesus and their husbands don't like it. Their husbands get mean and ornery and it, and it just kept going. She kept growing in the Lord and he didn't like it. And he decided what I'll do is, is I'm going to kill her. I'm going to kill the children. I'm going to kill myself. But he had to have a reason so he thought what he'd do is he would accuse her of taking his precious keys. He was a banker, had keys to the bank, keys to the house, and keys to the car. So he carried his keys to work with him that day. And he left early. And he drove over a footbridge over the, or he walked across a footbridge over the Nile River. And he dropped his keys in. He went to a local tavern. And the Bible says, the Bible, the story says that he, he drank and caroused until he was sufficiently drunk. He went home and he pounded the front door open. And he walked in and he said, Woman, where's my keys? While he was at the tavern drinking, she went down to the market to get supper. She picked up a nice-sized Nile perch to prepare for supper. She got home and she gutted the fish. And of all things, inside the fish were her husband's keys. She said, how in the world could they have gotten there? She decided to clean them up and hang them on the hook in the bedroom. When he came home that night and said, woman, where's my keys? She was already in bed. She got up, took the keys off the hook, laid them in his hands. He was astonished. And by his own testimony, 
He said, I was immediately sober, fell on my knees, and confessed Jesus as my Lord. Listen, you might have come in this room and be a drunkard. You might be bound by some kind of addiction. You might be bound by some kind of something inside of you. You can't forgive somebody. Maybe you've been hurt in your past and you can't get over it. What I'm telling you is that this word is a powerful word. All you've got to do is hear the word of the Lord. And immediately, I said immediately. He can make a drunkard be immediately sober. Don't you think he can take the chains that bind you down? He can release you immediately. Oh. Somebody in this room needs to take home of the redeeming, restoring word. You're just, you're so tired of struggling with what you're struggling with. And you're just about worn out. Call on the name of the Lord. His word will restore you. He'll pick you up. He'll redeem you. If it's sickness, if it's discouragement, whatever it is, immediately He can pick you up from where you are. Some of you need to grab a hold of the demanding, ruling, ordering word. So you just aren't living right. You want to go to heaven, but you want to hang on to the stuff of this world. This word, this word gives you marching orders. There are boundaries. There are things that we are allowed to do. And there are things that is clearly according to this word. We ought to leave them alone. I'm going to ask you to stand all over the building. Listen. Whatever you've done in your past. Immediately, He'll forgive you and He'll forget it. If you're an alcoholic, if you're sexual promiscuous, if you're bound by something else, I'm not here to condemn you because none of us are perfect. Our righteousness is a filthy rags. It takes the Lord, I'm telling you, that if you'll give it to Him immediately, wash it all away. Throw it into that sea of forgetfulness. And when you try to remind him, Lord, I'm sorry for that. He's going to say, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? We're going to sing. If you're here and don't know Jesus. The devil's trying to tell you right now, but you don't know what all I've done. I'm telling you, immediately it can leave you. Immediately it can be gone. Immediately you can be free from it. Maybe you're here and you just need some restoring, some redeeming. Maybe you're here and you just need to give some stuff to the Lord. Trying to hang on to too much, got to give it to Him. I know what time it is. Father God, I believe if the word's gone forward, the Holy Ghost has already done his job. He's speaking to people right now. God, let them not be afraid or ashamed or inhibited to move. Let them understand the power of this word and let them move in the name of Jesus.